How's it going, guys? So it is 3.47 a.m. Friday, April 8th here in Japan. Total fucking crackhead right now, but you know what? We're going to do a medium difficulty cardiopulmonary question. I'm not going to waste our fucking time, all right? We could do an, a 40-minute oral presentation regarding all of the cardiopulm stuff, but uh, we're just going to cut to the chase here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. Six-year-old man. He's got a three-day history of worsening productive cough, shortness of breath. He smoked two packs of cigarettes daily for 45 years. Point to maximal impulses in the sub xiphoid space, blood pressure 130 over 80. Questions just asking what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So clearly he's got COPD, 90 pack year history of smoking. Point of maximal impulse in the sub xiphoid space is very buzzy for COPD. This is how I've seen it written on the NBME exam. When you have massive hyperinflated lungs that are pushing the heart toward the median, the midline, you're going to get a point of maximal impulse uh, inferior to the xiphoid sternum, okay, in the midline. Uh, this can also be written on NBME exam as a long, narrow cardiac silhouette, okay? If they want, for instance, a dilated heart, they would give you a point of maximal impulse that's lateralized in the anterior auxiliary line, okay? So let's just walk through the answer choices here. What are we likely to see in this patient with COPD? Let's just go backwards. Choice E, to and from are my wrong fucking answer. This refers to PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. Uh, this is another way of writing continuous machinery-like murmur, very buzzy, of course, pan-systolic, pan-diastolic murmur. If you guys have been following my content for a while, you'll know that I've talked about this to and from murmur before. Uh, there's a question on offline 2CK NBME6 that rides on you knowing to and fro means uh, continuous machinery-like murmur in order to get the question right. Every fucking student says, what the fuck, when they see this question, all right? It means PDA. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, paradoxical pulse, wrong answer. Very uh, fancy way of just saying pulse is paradoxus, okay? I've seen it written on NBME exams like this. It's like, ooh, wow, paradoxical pulse. Just pulse is paradoxus. This is what we see in cardiac tamponade classically. And this is going to be a drop in systolic blood pressure greater than 10 millimeters of mercury with inspiration. Uh, Cardiac tamponade is where you have a pericardial effusion plus low blood pressure. You're going to get Beck triad in addition, which is hypotension, JVD, muffled slash distant heart sounds, okay? Plus or minus uh, pulses paradoxus or paradoxical pulse. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Wrong answer. You need to know PCWP is uh, the same as left atrial pressure. In COPD, we don't have left heart abnormalities. There's no left heart pathology here. If anything, this would cause core pulmonale, which would be right heart failure secondary to a pulmonary cause. This guy doesn't have core pulmonale. The vignette doesn't tell us anything about right heart failure. So, but you need to know that in COPD, the left heart's perfectly fine, all right? Left atrial pressure is normal. This is really, really high yield, and it's to my observation that uh, students fuck up PCWP all the time. You need to know in cardiogenic shock, PCWP is elevated. Choice B, holosystolic member that increases with inspiration. This is the correct answer. This refers to tricuspid regurgitation. Now, this might seem extremely weird, and I agree with you. It's not my opinion, all right? So you need to know that the, that the highest yield cause of tricuspid regurgitation on USMLE is pulmonary hypertension. In COPD, you're going to have uh, a combination of emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So emphysema is loss of the alveolar capillary beds. So decreased surface area, the alveolar capillaries are a parallel circuit. So if you decrease surface area, you're going to increase resistance of the circuit, increase afterload on the right ventricle. In, in addition, the chronic bronchitis, you're going to have hypoxic vasoconstriction, blue bloater, uh, which will increase afterload pulmonary hypertension on the right ventricle. So doesn't uh, pulmonary hypertension slash core, pul core pulmonale, they don't cause pulmonary regurge uh, to my observation on, or, pul or pulmonic regurge. They don't cause that uh, to my observation on NBME exams. Uh, just tricuspid regurge. Why that's the case, no fucking idea, okay? But uh, we could conjecture that there should be other higher yield causes like IV drug user endocarditis causing tricuspid regurge uh, due to vegetations or carcinoid syndrome but it's pulmonary hypertension. 
And you all, so right sided murmurs increase with inspiration, increase venous return. You also need to know that pulmonary hypertension causes a loud P2 or a loud pulmonic component of S2, or they can just say loud S2, very, very high yield findings across vignettes. And now that I said that, you'll probably notice them showing up more frequently, whereas before your eyes probably just uh, breezed over them, okay? So tricuspid regurge uh, due to pulmonary hypertension or a loud P2. Should I say fixed wide splitting of S2 is wrong answer. This just, this just refers to atrial septal defect. Uh, when you have more volume in the right ventricle, you can get a wide splitting of S2. Increased pressure in the right ventricle uh, will cause a wide splitting. But the important part is the fixed. So fixed splitting of S2 is ASD. And then in, in about half of questions, they might add the wide in there. All right. But fixed splitting of S2. Uh, Patent for menovale, it's an ASD as well. Okay, just any ASD. You know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time, that's it.